Well, I've been thinking about the beach lately and crabs remind me of the beach. So we're painting a blue crab today. Come and join along. Now I've gotten my crab all drawn out onto my watercolor paper and I'm using 140 pound cold press watercolor paper. And I'm just wetting the background with clear water, being careful not to get that water on my crab. I just want the background to be wet. I'm not taking the water all the way to the edges of the paper because I want it to be more of a vignette. I'm not trying to make the whole background brown, which is what we're gonna do next to look like sand. But first, I just wanted to make sure that I got all that wet back there. Now, while it's still wet, you're gonna be working wet into wet. I'm dropping a nice sort of yellowy brown sandy color in there right behind my crab. Again, I don't want the, all of the paper behind him to be brown. So I'm doing just a little vignette, but I'm also taking some clean water, making sure the edges stay wet so that there's not a hard edge once he dries. And I'm just gonna to continue to work my way around the crab and make sure it's wet as I'm dropping in those colors. I put a little bit of a darker brown right along the edges of him to look like a shadow and that gives it just a little bit more depth and dimension. I'm taking some clean water making sure those edges are soft, that there's no hard edges around them to keep that vignette. Now once you get this all finished, then I want you to just let this layer completely dry. Just let it dry. Now once it's dry, I have gotten some blue, a nice good blue mixture, and I'm going to start with those spines. He has spines on either side of his shell. I don't know why, but when I look at crabs, I always think that they are like gladiators. The gladiators of the beach, they have on all this armor, they have their big claws for their weapons. They just remind me of gladiators. I know my imagination gets away with me sometimes, but it is what it is. So we're painting that blue and while it's still wet I came in with some dark. Some You can either use black from the tube, although that's not my favorite way to do it, or you can mix your own black, your own dark color. However you want to do it, it's your painting. You do what you, what you want to do with your painting. I'm just here to give you suggestions and show you how I do it. Then I put some orange on his opposite spine and a little bit of a darker, deeper blue. And I'm blending those together while they're both still wet, but making sure that the blue doesn't go all the way to the tip because I want the tip of that spine to still be orange. And right above that, I'm coming back with my, my really dark, dark. It's almost a black. And I'm just going around the edges of that spine while, again, while it's still wet just so that they'll have nice, soft blendages, blendages, blendages. Is blendages a word? They'll have nice, soft, blended edges. Whoo, there you go. <laughs> so now I'm going to get some more clean water, rinsing off my brush. And once I get my brushes cleaned off, I'm gonna come back with that clean water and spread it over the crab shell. We are going to get that nice and wet because we're going to drop in some sort of a blue-green color later on in just a little bit. But first we're going to wet it down, being careful just to do like the top part of his shell with the water. Not really doing a lot underneath his, like at the very bottom part of his shell. But now I'm going to go ahead and use that same sort of sandy brown color and just apply that while it's still wet into some of the areas where some of that shines through the green of the shell. So we're gonna put that on first and get that sort of tannish, tannish brownish sandy color put in first. And once we get that to our liking, then we're gonna mix up a nice green for his shell. Now I'm wetting it a little bit again. It got a little dry during my painting of the browns, my brown highlights I put in there. So I'm making sort of an aqua blue green color here mixture, and I'm gonna put that on his shell. And it's pretty bright though. 
Yeah, um, it looks like it might be a little too unnatural. It, it doesn't look like a natural green, but I'm going to work with it for just a second. We'll see what we're going to come up with. But we're going to just drop that in onto the wet paper and just let that water do its magic. Just let that water pull that green all across the shell and float it across the top. So I'm going to add a little bit of perylene green, some dark green to that blue green, and those are, that's going to act as my shadows. While it's still wet, I'm just sort of painting in some areas that I look at my reference photo and I see that they are darker in those areas. His shell has sort of some sections. It's, it's like armor plates. Just like I said, he's a little gladiator and he has plates of armor on his shell so that it's actually, his shell is constructed into little sections. So I'm painting those sections. I'm putting in the, the shadows I'm also, you'll see, lifting out a little bit of color where it's too much. Now I've just sprinkled some table salt in there and I'm going to let that dry completely. That is, that's a optional. You don't have to put the salt in there. It makes a really nice texture. I was just experimenting and wanted to see how it would look. So then I have jumped over here and started a really, really nice bright blue. And I'm mixing it with just a little bit of a sort of a drab green to get some of those colors if you look at if you if you look at the finished crab you'll see that there are some you know the there's variations in the color the blue transitions to sort of an olivey green and so it's really it's really pretty but I have to be mindful of that and add that while it's still wet so they blend nice and smoothly now I'm just working on the joint putting in shadows and getting those base colors in. And I'm gonna let you watch. The main thing I'm doing here is getting the base colors in and then coming back with a little bit of darker colors to add shadows. So enjoy a little music, watch for a little bit, and I will be back shortly. see I'm adding orange around the tip of his claw here I'm also being careful there he has some sort of little nubs or little a little I don't know what you would call them but they're raised areas on the inside of his claws to help him hang on to his prey when he catches it so I'm painting in between those they are white so I'm just painting around those and getting a nice deeper orange toward the edges, a lighter orange toward the inside area of the claw, and just blending that in. Now, if you're wondering, I'm using Creative Mark, um, the Mimic Faux Squirrel watercolor brushes. I love these watercolor brushes. They hold a ton of water. They hold a ton of paint. I, ever since I've started using them, I've just fallen in love with them. I use them all the time. So that's what I have. I have Creative Mark 
Mimic Creative Mark brushes, and they are the Faux Squirrel watercolor brushes. And it comes in a set, and if you're interested, I'll, I'll link it below, and if you're interested, you can check it out. But I do really like this set. Now I'm coming back, adding some darker details, some more shadows. Getting in some of that texture that's right there where he has a, the, the joint where his claw is connected on to his little arm. I'm going to go under here and paint some darker blue. I'm going to let you watch just a second and listen to some music. on his face just in a second once I get the shadow in there and in his face I'm using sort of a brownish green mixture that I've made I'm calling this his face I'm not sure do crabs really have faces well if he does we're, we're painting it in right now we're using sort of a brownish green mixture I'm painting in these these sort of holes that he has here there's some some sunken spots I don't think it's his eyes. It might be gills. I don't know, but I don't know that much about the anatomy of a crab. So I'm just going to go by my reference photo and just paint in what I see. What I see. So he's getting some little eyeball treatments here with this brownish green. Putting on a little mouth, sort of. He looks like he's sad. Like a, He's just like a grouchy old man. I don't know. He went from gladiator to grouch just that quick just with the stroke of a paintbrush <laughs> now I'm painting his underneath with some clean water and then I'm just gonna drop in some darker browns underneath and there's sort of a little pattern right on the bottom part of him of his I'm gonna call it his mouth right under his mouth it looks almost like a chin so that's what I'm gonna call it it's really his underside part but that is where he puts his food, so I'm going to assume it's his mouth. And we're just going to work around and keep blending in some areas where it needs it. He's starting to look pretty good. I'm just adding some, I wet that background and then just added some blue to it so that it looks like it's in the shadow and behind those other little legs. Now we're going to work on these legs the same way we did the other ones and I'm just gonna let you watch and just remember pay attention to where highlights are where shadows are and the different colors that you see in the crab he has some little uh, spikes here on his arms that's part of his armor so I'm just painting those in first and then I'm gonna get to painting those arms and legs or yeah well I guess they're all legs but we're gonna paint them either way
Okay, we're finishing up his legs and they are very similar to the legs the opposite legs that we painted before just remember to get in where the shadows and the highlights are trim up those claws with orange and black and you got it so now I have wet part of part of the back of my crab and I'm coming in here with some more shadows like I told you before his shell is made in just sort of little sections so we're going to start shadowing in those sections of his back, his little plates of armor. And it's okay that we're painting over that salt. Now we brushed all the salt off before we started adding paint to it. So all that salt that we put on earlier, we brushed that off before we started to repaint this or apply more paint. 
and I'm getting some darker green in here toward the edges just really trying to get some of the shapes in there and some of the shadows to make him look a little bit more three-dimensional and you notice I'm leaving some of the lightest base color shining through in some spots so that you can see that his scales not scales his armor his plates of armor up there are separate coming back in and a little bit more detail to his face and his mouth it's just some darker shadows in there and I'm just taking a little bit of white gouache and I'm putting some highlights across his mouth area across some of his little spines that are fringing his shell there you can use gouache you can use a white paint pen you can use ph dr ph martin's bleed proof white totally up to you i've got white gouache out so that's what i'm using now i'm coming back in and adding a few more shadows and some areas that it needs it just so that i can separate those legs from each other so i put some shadows in coming back to my white gouache i'm adding some highlights to try to get the sort of shiny look on his shell from being wet and just make it again give a little bit more dimension so I'm working on that with my with my opaque white I have here my white gouache and just getting those highlights in there I'm also blending it out with a little bit of water so some of that green shines through so it's not a stark white it's just a, it's more of a lighter green once you put that on thin it out with just a little bit of water so that that green will shine through the white so it's not so stark. Now I'm just doing some little dots across his body just to add some texture. We lost a little bit of that whenever we painted over our salt texture, so I'm just gonna add a few little white dots to sort of bring a little bit of that texture back out. It's totally optional. You don't have to do this part. If you don't want to, it's your crab. If you don't want, want to detexturize him and not give him any texture, that's up to you you do your crab the way that you want him to look and I'm still fussing around and just adding some browns here and there in some areas because he has some brown in some of his blue areas so we want to get that now I'm just going to keep adding shadows a little bit of texture just the shapes of the shadows I've got a reference photo that I'm looking at anytime you're working from a photo or a reference like that look at it more than you actually look at your painting so that will actually help you make a better painting because you will be fully involved and fully cognizant of what it is you are painting it's gonna be right there you're gonna be looking at it and that just helps you make a better painting than if you just focus on your painting you don't see where you're starting to go awry or making mistakes if you haven't glanced back at your reference photo now I'm actually mixing a little bit of that tan color, that sandy color, with the white gouache. And I'm going around the edges, his little skirt here, his little skirt of spikes. Because again, I didn't want it to be stark white, I wanted it to be more of a beige white, sort of that sandy color. And I'm going right around those edges to lighten that up. I like the effect of it, it has, it's, it's doing well. So I'm just adding a little bit of that dark color to the green, to his shell green, the green of his shell, the color we mixed for it, and going along the edges where his little spikes are and putting in some shadows here and there just to make it look more textured, more realistic. And now I'm adding a little bit of texture onto the top part of his claws. There's a, sort of a design, so I'm just using the smallest brush that I have in this pack, and that's a number two, I'm just creating lines and just shapes all along there. Really makes it more visually interesting. So there you go. We have finished this crab. Subscribe, like, share, comment. It does a world of good. And thank you so much for watching my channel. I really appreciate you.